Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel, or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, I apologise about that, and also if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision-related video here on my channel, and one that I'm filming on a complete whim. It's very possible this will be a very short video, and I may well end up privating it or deleting it from my channel in the near future. But, as we are all very much aware, things aren't looking too great in Eastern Europe at the moment. And it's all over the news here in the UK. During lunchtime, I happened to have the television on and I could see images of an airport in Ukraine and a great big plume of smoke rising up into the air and people running about. And yes, Ukraine might be miles away from the UK, but seeing something like that still isn't nice, is it? And you're probably thinking, well, what's that got to do with Eurovision whatsoever? Eurovision is a light-hearted entertainment show that happens once a year. But this year, it's probably going to go ahead with one of those competing nations invading another. And that word, invading, invasion, war, such an ugly, horrible word, that's all we can really hear at the moment. You turn on the TV, full-scale invasion. You read it in the newspaper, full-scale war. It's 2022, I thought we were better than that. I thought we'd moved past those dark days. Now, Eurovision's been going since the mid-1950s. The European Broadcasting Union was created as a way for nations and broadcasters to come together to cooperate, to create shows and events that could be broadcast across the continent, pretty much. And obviously, over the decades, Europe's changed a lot, and it will change in the future, I'm sure about that. We've had wars. We've had... Nervy times, dangerous times, but Eurovision has kept on going. The only thing that stopped it in all these decades is the pandemic. And I'm not saying that Eurovision should be stopped this year in Turin. I'm not saying that at all. But when one nation is invading another, surely the nation that is the perpetrator of these events, shouldn't be allowed to take part. I've got nothing against Russian singers, Russian musicians, Russian artists, and I feel sorry for them, because they probably don't side with the political circumstances in their homeland right now. In fact, I highly doubt they do. But this year, the EBU has said that Russia is allowed to participate. But I feel sorry for whoever that artist is. Because all the questions, or certainly a lot of the questions, are going to be about a political nature. It could be a very testing experience for that sink and the delegation in question. They might get booed. They might receive abuse online. That won't be nice, because at the end of the day, what's going on at home might be terrifying and dangerous and a risk to life, but they're just a singer doing the best they can with their song, putting on the best performance they can. I'd feel very sorry for them. Now the EBU... I've long thought have been a bit cowardly about such matters. Now, I'm not saying Azerbaijan should have been scrapped of hosting rights in 2012, but remember all the controversy about that? And the human rights? I haven't forgotten. Obviously, in the early 1990s, the breakup of Yugoslavia and the wars that were happening in the Balkans, Sarajevo, that was before I was born, but I know about it. Belarus, of course. Their broadcaster was banned from participating in Eurovision, I believe, for three years. So the EBU can take a stand when they feel like it. But we're talking about 
war here. We're talking about something that is deadly and terrifying and unsettling. All of those people in Ukraine, millions of individuals, they've done nothing wrong. But now their lives are at risk. Their homes are at risk. Their livelihoods. It was on the news as well earlier. They're fleeing the country. They don't know where they're going necessarily. They don't know when they'll be able to come back. School children who, you know, one day they're at school learning how to do algebra or something, and the next minute their education is put on hold. And who knows when it might start up again. Citizens in Ukraine being handed guns on the street, weapons on the street. What's that all about? That's not the way things should be. Kiev's a beautiful place. I've seen plenty of pictures of it. Never been myself, but hosted Eurovision twice, hosted Junior Eurovision twice. I think I've already said this. But it's a beautiful place. And right now, the feeling I'd imagine in that city and all over Ukraine is one of real concern. Those children, they're never going to be able to forget about this. Those parents worried about their young ones. Families. For all we know, could end up separated. Who knows what's going to happen over the coming weeks and or months. I'm really, really rambling here. And I'm not going to go into any great depth because I didn't study history at university. I don't know nearly enough about the current situation to talk about it in finite detail. I don't want to embarrass myself. There are other people on YouTube who can do a much better job of talking about all of this than me. I recommend you check them out if you're interested. But, the Swedish broadcaster SVT has come out today and said that they are not happy about Russia participating. And I'm sure other broadcasters are thinking the same thing, even if they haven't had the balls to say it yet. As somebody who loves Eurovision and has done for nigh on 20 years... I think it's probably in everybody's best interests that Russia does not participate in Turin. Because, you know, they're invading. Not everybody in Russia, but a select few individuals, and maybe few is completely the wrong word, I know, but I think you know what I'm trying to say here. It's an invasion. The freedom, the rights of a nation, maybe multiple nations before long, is under threat. And Eurovision is not about that. Eurovision is about love and sharing cultures and languages, no matter who you are or where you're from. It's about eating salads. It's about dancing Lasha Tumbai. And this year, yeah. Eurovision will happen, Eurovision fans will enjoy it, but in the background, there'll be bombs going off, perhaps, and fires, and deaths. That might overshadow what should be one of the most enjoyable things every year for so many thousands of millions of people. It's a great shame. And I really haven't vocalised my thoughts here in a very eloquent manner. Other people would do a much better job. But, with that being said, I've thought very carefully about this, and I always try and see the positives in every song, every country, every act, every year. But this year, it might be quite difficult to do that. And I was thinking about not talking about Russia whatsoever on my channel this Eurovision season. Not reacting to the song, not writing about the song, nothing. Zip. Nada. But then I thought, well, actually, should I do that? So what I'm going to do is talk about it when the Russian song is released, if indeed Russia is still allowed to participate, which is looking very likely. I'll talk about the song, I'll react to it, I'll do a blog post about the song, but probably I won't go into as much depth as I usually would. I don't know, maybe my opinions will change. I'm sure that there are... Uh, campaigns online, petitions already in place that people have set up asking the European Broadcasting Union to expel Russia from participating this year. And 
I suppose needs must. I don't know. I don't think Russia should participate. I think it's just in the best interests of the competition and fans and individuals in general that something like this shouldn't happen. All of these sanctions are being put in place by various world governments. The UEFA Champions League final is very likely not to take place in St. Petersburg now. So, should Russia be allowed to participate in the biggest entertainment event in the world this year? Maybe not. I just want to finish this video by saying that I hope that every single individual in Ukraine gets out of this okay and at some point can go back to a life of normality, of safety, of freedom, knowing that their rights in an independent country are fully intact. These are nervous times. Make no bones about it. There will be so-called Eurovision fans cracking jokes about this online. No doubt about it, they probably already have, and shame on them. This is not something to joke about. We're talking about lives at stake. We're talking about freedom on the line. We are talking about something that is unprecedented in our time. It is what it is. All we can do is watch these events unfurl and hope there is a solution at the end of it. But who knows when that will be. It's time for the world's leaders to step up and let's be honest, maybe they don't do enough of that as it is. But now there's no choice. It's time to separate the boys from the men. And of course there are women as well. And let's be honest, the women will probably do a better job than the men, because they usually do. Political uh, women are usually right on the money. The men flounder. I'm going off on a tangent here. But let's hope that there can be a safe and calm resolution to all of this before long. And with regards to Eurovision, something lovely, let's try and enjoy it without the possibility of an artist participating who is put under immense pressure and is booed and bullied themselves because like I said earlier bullying is not attractive and yet there's an awful lot of it going on at the moment anyway that was a massive ramble wasn't it and look I know, I just said a few moments ago, that we shouldn't be cracking jokes about anything to do with this. Not really. But, I feel like it might be a good idea to end this video on what I'm about to say. If it all goes wrong, just give that country a banana. Feel free to leave comments on this video. Check out my other social media pages if you so wish. And I apologise if the quality wasn't that great. Or indeed, I rambled so much, it's embarrassing. <laughs> but, I have a platform. And I just wanted to chip in with my thoughts. And maybe more Eurovision fans will do the same. Feel free to share this video, like it, whatever it is. It's just my take on matters at the moment. Like I said, it might be privated or deleted as well very soon. Until next time, and I really mean this, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and bye for now. Take care.